Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video. Before we go any further, I need to apologise just in case I need to preempt possible audio issues. Today I'm having to use my AirPods as my microphone, as my actual microphone is in my girlfriend's car, meaning that I can't use it. However, I really wanted to get this video out to you today because I feel that it's super, super important. I'm even going to go as far as to say that of all of the videos that I've done, this is the one which you need to hear. This is the one which is possibly, and no, in fact, definitely, it's going to really challenge you. It's going to force you to reflect on your current situation. It's going to force you to ask yourself very, very, very uncomfortable questions because we're going to be talking about my opinion my experience, what I think of the current mental health epidemic. Now, before we go any further, this video is absolutely not designed to offend anyone. This is not at all in any way, shape or form supposed to belittle the legitimacy of anyone's mental health issues. But what I can say from my own experience, from, my, from the evidence that's in front of me everywhere that I go, and I can tell you that after working with thousands of clients all around the world, not one single person who came to me for help with depression and anxiety not one of those pairs, what, not, not one of those people, once we peeled back the onion skin, once we really looked at the, the, the bigger picture, not one of those people actually had depression. Not one of those people actually had anxiety. All of those people had two things in common. They had issues with their current beliefs and they had issues with their lifestyle setup. Let's, let's get into it a little tiny bit more. We are told in the media, social media, the regular media, the television, the internet, we are told that we are in the middle of a current mental health epidemic. Depression is on the rise, anxiety is on the rise, and the purpose of today's video is to question that a little tiny bit, because here's my problem, here's my issue. The majority of these people who are talking about depression, talking about anxiety, are self-diagnosed. They are going through periods in their life of extreme sadness and extreme worry. But something I want you to understand is since the beginning of time, humans have worried. Since the beginning of time, humans have been through terrible circumstances and terrible situations, which has caused people to feel incredibly sad. Now, if we fast forward to the modern day and we have Google at our fingertips, people are Googling their symptoms and because their symptoms are in the same boat as people who are suffering from depression, suffering from anxiety, they are then label them, labeling themselves as depressed. They are labeling themselves as anxious. And what happens when we label ourselves? What happens when everybody around us is telling us that we are something? Of course we are going to act in accordance with the label that we give ourselves. If we look on the internet, if we recognise the symptoms of depression, we are going to identify as someone as depressed. If we identify as someone who is depressed, we are going to act like someone who is in the, in the, in the pits of extreme depression. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we act in accordance with our own identity? It's the same with anxiety. Things happen, people worry, it's natural. You Google your symptoms, your symptoms are in line with someone who suffers from anxiety. So you therefore, you act like someone who has anxiety. In psychology, it's called looping. I am, therefore I act. I am, therefore I act. I am depressed, therefore I act depressed. I am depressed, therefore I act depressed. I am anxious, therefore I act anxious. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, like I said, 
This is not belittling the medically diagnosed, the clinically diagnosed people amongst us who are genuinely struggling with depression and anxiety. However, that is not you. And if, feel free, if this moves you, if this triggers you enough that you feel that you have to comment below and you have to fight your corner, that's absolutely fine. It's a free world. You can do as you please. If I can help you see things slightly differently, I will. If that means that I'm the bad guy for a short amount of time until you understand my message, that's absolutely fine. I can absolutely cope with being the bad guy if it helps move you out of the rut. So we've covered belief. We've covered the fact that if you label yourself, you identify as someone who is depressed, anxious, whatever, insomniac, you are going to act in accordance. Because you act in accordance, your lifestyle, the second part of why I believe that it's massively overplayed, the second part is your lifestyle setup. Your lifestyle is set up in line with your identity. And it's only when we really, really, really examine this that we see that the people who are self-diagnosed with depression, who are just suffering from extreme sadness, they're always chronically underslept. We know for an absolute fact, if you are chronically underslept, that is going to absolutely kick you square in the emotional gangangs and it's going to dramatically bring down your mood. It's going to dramatically change your perception of absolutely everything that happens. You are going to put a negative spin on everything because you are not emotionally repaired. You've not been getting the right amount of emotionally repairing dream sleep. The reason that you feel tired and fucked and battered all the time is you're not getting enough Deep sleep. Deep sleep is for physical regeneration, physical repair. REM sleep, dream sleep is for emotional regeneration. It's where we make sense of things that are happening. So can you see, if we remove the emotion from this, if, you, if, we, if we've calmed down after being triggered and you look at it, it's like, oh, okay, so I'm not taking care of myself. Therefore, this self-fulfilling prophecy, I am feeling the way I'm feeling because I'm not prioritizing sleep. I'm acting like someone who is an insomniac. My lifestyle is in line with someone who has the, who, who believes that they are suffering from clinical depression. They are chronically, uh, and they are suffering from um, clinical anxiety. Does that make sense? So we're looking at people who are believing and behaving that they are suffering from a mental disorder. They are not getting enough sleep. They are chronically undernourished because you are acting like someone who's depressed. Someone who is depressed, they kind of withdraw from themselves. Their physiology is, is not the way that, that we are kind of wanting them to be. So they're acting in line with this fictitious character that they have labeled themselves with. So they're underslept, they're undernourished. They're generally dehydrated. They spend a lot of time indoors. They are missing social contact. Social contact for emotional health is absolutely critical. Engaging with other human beings. Once you withdraw because of your identity, once you withdraw because of your current patterns of beliefs and behaviors, you are pulling yourself away from society. You are looping, you are depressed, therefore I act depressed. I'm depressed, therefore I act depressed. Hopefully, this has made you think a little bit. Hopefully, this is, hope, I'm going to be honest, hopefully it's made you feel so uncomfortable that you have to move. Because it's only when we are super uncomfortable that we move. Think about it when you're in the cinema and your bum cheeks go dead numb and you have to move. It's because you're uncomfortable. Hopefully, my content makes you uncomfortable. Hopefully, it spurs you into action. Hopefully it makes you reflect on things. Hopefully it helps you pull your head out your arse so that you can progress forward at a rate of knots. And like I said, if that means that I'm the bad guy for a short amount of time, I am the bad guy for a short amount of time. If this has helped, if 
The content that I put out has spurred you on a little tiny bit. If you're a first time viewer, or if you've watched this, if you've watched my channel a lot and you haven't subscribed, why don't you take a couple of seconds now and just press the subscribe button before we go any further. Hopefully, you've got something from today's content. Hopefully, it's made you think, it's made you reflect on your own life, it's made you look at your quality of life, it's made you look at your patterns of beliefs and your behaviours, it's made you look at your current lifestyle setup. I can guarantee every single person who's ever came to me struggling mentally, within one to two weeks of implementing a solid structure, implementing a routine as simple as going to bed at the same time and getting up at the same time, as simple as nourishing the body, as simple as going outside and getting uh, sunlight in the morning and fresh air during the day. These things have massively changed my clients and customers' perception of themselves. And it's when we change our self-perception, self that's when we can move. Anyway, today's been emotional. I'll catch you in the next video.